This meeting is being audio and video recorded. Closed captioning is available by clicking the transcript button in the bottom middle of your screen. Beth, can you please call the roll? Uh, Donnie is not here. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes, here. Uh, Diane is not here. Nancy? Here. Karen? Here. Jamila? Here. Carolyn? Not here. Um, and Adam. I thought I had, I thought I saw Adam coming in earlier. Okay, not here at the moment. He's, no, he's here. He's just, I'm trying to ask him to unmute. And there he goes. There I am. Here I am. There Thank you me. are. Good. All right. We have a quorum, Beth? Yeah, we have six voting members. Great. Thank you. All right. Does any member of the public wish to speak? <laughs> Before we open it up to members of the public, I just want to remind folks that comments are limited to three minutes. And please state your name and the city of town of residence for the record. And if you're speaking on an agenda item, please hold comments until that time and uh, you'll be recognized while we discuss that agenda item. And Cindy, can you help me out if you see anyone who has their hand up? I can I see. I will, yeah. Thank you. Nobody, nobody? Okay. So we're gonna move on to, on the agenda number three, the approval of the minutes, but we're gonna table that because the minutes did not go out uh, early enough. So we'll put that on the agenda for next month's meeting. Okay, we're gonna do reports from departments. Does anyone wanna chime in from the departments? I have information from the DPW, but who else is out there that would like to say anything? Anyone? I don't see anybody. Okay, got multiple screens going, so I'll be looking over here, but from the DPW, uh, Pavement Preservation 2022, uh, West Hampton Road, West Farms Road, and the sections of Florence Road between the city line and Route 66 received a Cape Seal surface treatment. This treatment extends the pavement life around 10 years and is less expensive than reconstructing the roadway. The contractor will be working on punch list items and cleaning up the project area. An additional item from the DPW, solar LED signs have been installed at the intersection of West Hampton Road and Glendale Road, West Farms Road, and West Hampton Road, Loudville Road, North, North Loudville Road. Uh, this is an intersection that we've discussed uh, in the commission before. Um, LED intersection warning signs were installed on West Hampton Road approaching the intersections. LED stop signs were installed on Glendale Road, West Farms Road, Loudville Road, and North Loudville Road. The contractor will be back to finishing installing the solar, solar panel on two of the signs. Third item, Gothic Street parking lot. The Gothic Street parking lot was closed to the general public beginning November 7th for drainage improvements. Work is scheduled for the weeks of November 14th and 21st. During construction, several meters on Gothic Street and Center Street have been bagged for use by the People's Institute, City IT Services, Center for New Americans, the Literacy Group, and Tapestry Health. The fourth agenda item, or the fourth item from the DPW is pavement markings. Markings Inc. has finished repainting various markings in the city for this year. Another item is crack sealing. Indus has completed crack sealing several recreational field parking lots in various streets, including sections of Route 9, Florence Road, and Pine Street. Also, there are several ongoing mass DOT projects on King Street, Damon Road, and Route 5. Any questions about those projects should be directed to the mass DOT, <coughs> District 2. And lastly, the King Street project is substantially complete. Minor punch list items will be addressed in the coming weeks. Okay, if there's no other comments from departments. Jody, Carolyn yep. just joined at 404. I'm not sure. Okay. Carolyn, do you have anything you'd like to add? We are just doing department updates. Um, um, not um, really. I guess the only other thing is that I'm, I don't, I didn't hear you say this, but you might have said it at the beginning that um, we just had our kickoff meeting for the Bridge Street um, Safe Routes to School um, 
project, but that actually won't start till spring, but it is sort of the initiation of that work. So it's sidewalk improvements and crosswalk improvements in and around the Bridge Street School. Okay, excellent, thank you. Anyone else on department updates? Nope. Okay, we have several matters before the commission this afternoon. We're gonna begin with agenda item 5A, which is a proposed ordinance relative to stop signs on Middle Street, High Street, and Clement Street. And I'm gonna read the ordinance. As soon as it opens, there it is. All right, City of Northampton, Massachusetts in the year 2022, upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission, 22.xxx, an ordinance relative to stop signs on Middle Street, High Street, and Clement Street. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled as follows. Section one, that the 312-113 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312, 113, schedule 12, stop and yield intersections. Isolated stop signs, stop intersections are established at the following locations, 1015, 1981, 1015, 1987, 518, 1989, 56, 1993, 11, 5, 1998, 17, 1999, 36, 2003, 12 to 2004. Middle Street, direction of travel east at the intersection of Chestnut Street. High Street, direction of travel west at the intersection of North Maple Street. And Clement Street, direction of travel south on Burt's Pit Road. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation? Move a positive recommendation. Thank you, can I have a second? Okay. Thank you. Okay, before opening up, I have a few notes from the DPW. So we've heard concerns about drivers pulling into traffic without stopping and visibility issues at the following intersections, Middle Street at Chestnut, High at North Maple and Clement at Burt's Pit Road. So the ordinance proposes stop signs on Middle Street, High Street and Clement Street, all in Ward 5. The city hired Fuss and O'Neill to conduct intersection analysis at each location and determine if stop sign control was appropriate. Weekday morning and afternoon peak intersection turning movement counts of vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians were collected. Crash records were reviewed from the police department, field measurements, and site distances. High Street at North Maple, a stop sign is recommended on High Street. This engineering judgment was made primarily based on the limited site distance of the westbound approach looking north. The hill located on the northeast corner of the intersection is a visual obstruction for high street departures. Always stop control is not preferred due to the higher volume of vehicles on North Maple Street. That's high street in North Maple. Then Middle Street at Chestnut. This stop sign is recommended to be placed at the eastbound approach on Middle Street. This engineering judgment is made primarily based on the site distance data from the northbound and southbound approaches of the intersection. Then Clement Street at Burt's Pit Road. A stop sign is recommended on Clement Street. This engineering judgment is made primarily based on intersection site distance. It's made because intersection site distance for cars making a left turn out of Clement Street does not satisfy the required distance. So adding a stop condition to the southbound approach will help mitigate potential collisions. So we can open this up for, that's the DPW notes, what Donna would have said. Um, let's open this up for discussion. Any members of the public who would like to speak on this matter? Again, if you do want to speak, um, just say your name and um, your address. Thank you. Um, Alex Jarrett is looking to talk. Yep, Councillor Jarrett. Thank you, Alex Jarrett, 8th High Street, Florence. Um, all of these uh, stop sign proposals have come to us before, and um, I think they are certainly all warranted. <laughs> heard support from many of my residents. Um, so I'm just glad to see them this uh, moving forward. Thank you. Great. Would anyone else like to speak on this matter? Any members of the public? I don't see okay. any. If no one else, are there any members of the commission that would like to speak on this?
I see no one. Okay. So there's a motion for a positive recommendation on the floor. So with no further discussion, Beth, can you call the roll on this? Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam? Yes. That's seven yeses, that's unanimous. Great, thank you. Okay, the next agenda item is 5B. This is a discussion of traffic calming requests for South Main Street. So I will find that over here, South Main Street. Okay, so this is, uh, we normally talk about whenever we have these discussions, the police department looks at collision and speed data. So I did look at collision data, a uh, five-year analysis is, was conducted. There were seven collisions in the past five years on South Main Street. One collision involved a parked car. Five of the collisions involved single vehicles that left the roadway striking shrubbery signs and grass. That was the only consistent trend across all the accidents was it's, it's kind of rare to have single vehicles that are just leaving the roadway. Sometimes that can be indicative of a speeding issue or um, drivers who are not paying attention. Uh, speed data reviewed. We also reviewed the speed data and just on September 29th, 2022, we had collected speed data between September 2nd and 9th in the area of 108 South Main Street. During that time, the speeds of 7,695 vehicles were measured. The speed limit is a 30. The average speed measured 24. The 85th percentile speed was 32.2. So it was 2.2 miles per hour above the posted speed limit. It was determined that generally speaking, vehicles are not traveling um, in great excess of the posted limit. That's all I would normally say about this, but since I'm covering for the director, I'll also just mention uh, what she had to say from the DPW's perspective. South Main Street provides one lane of travel in the Northwest and Southwest directions between Locust Street and Elm Street. It's approximately 2,830 feet long and the width ranges from 24 to 29 feet. There's sidewalks on the west side from Elm Street to Locust Street, and there's double yellow center lines for the entire length and crosswalks at Pine Street. Parking is prohibited on both sides between Main Street and Pine Street. There is an existing speed regulation for South Main Street, and the speed limit starting at Elm Street heading northerly for 0.51 miles toward Locust Street is at 30, and the pavement is in deficient condition. That is from the DPW. So hearing that, we can open it up for discussion. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this? And if so, just state your, your name and address. How about you, Ed? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, Ed Wiseman, 74 South Main Street. A couple of things come to mind, Jody, as you described that research. Um, first, uh, you know, that, that end where you did the speed checking up around 108, um, it's, it's wider and broader and more open there down where we live here, where, where we tend to see a lot of this, the speeding, I would bet that's where you had a lot of those collisions into bushes and things like that. Um, here on our end, it's darker, it's, it, it seems narrower. You've got the scrub from the, the side of the field from Smith Voke. And uh, I would agree with, with what I read here that there's just um, a lot of zooming up and down the street uh, right around the time that the high school gets out. I've been outside walking my dog there and, and I almost like jump off the sidewalk a couple of times, pull my dog in. Um, sometimes I see people looking at their phone, maybe younger drivers. Uh, so I just uh, wanted to give you my two cents and I thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right, uh, Jackie Balance. Yes, um, I, I would like to add to what Ed said that street is a bit of a hill also and my experience with hills is that cars start getting going faster and they don't even know it and you really should check the speeds at the lower end of that hill okay thank you um olivia evans could you just 
state your name and your, your address. Hi, yes, I'm actually Pamela Sharon, um, that's my daughter. So I live at 168 South Main Street. Um, so at the very beginning, the mouth of the street, when you're talking from Main Street in Florence going down mm -hmm. South Main, right? Does everyone know where that is? Um, and I, I know you did that, The I think you said from December 2nd through the 9th, uh, was it uh, last year, 2022, right? So I feel like, you know, I don't know if it was colder out, if there was ice yet. I, I, I do believe we had some, some, some ice early on last year. I don't know the dates, but I, I would beg to differ. I feel like people speed um, excessively when they enter into the mouth. And I know that there's now a new crosswalk going across um, Main Street, but I've had, we have several tracks um, in our yard of cars making that turn really um, sharply and then driving over our um, the new uh, sidewalk. And there are like some really heavy, uh, deep gouges in the grass. So I feel like people are going very fast in the very beginning. And then they, like I agree with the last woman who spoke, they start um, going even faster towards the end of the hill. I, I have a real problem with what's happening between Pine Street. We live right at the corner of South Main and Pine. And I feel like most people try to avoid Main Street. They come zooming down South uh, Pine and then they go zooming around the corner of South Main, whether it's to get onto Main or to continue down South Main, it's just very excessive. Lots of traffic, lots of beeping, um, people going excessively. Do you have something to add? Just my husband is here as well. Um, I'm very disgruntled with the amount of traffic we've been getting and how fast people go. There are walkers, there are people with dogs, there are elderly people with canes. And I feel like people go zipping through and kind of beep at you, heaven forbid, if you're you know, crossing the street. I find it's a very um, frustrating spot to live because it's a beautiful spot of town, but the traffic is overpowering the people who live there. As residents, I am just not, I'm not pleased with the situation. Okay, that's it, thank you. Excuse me, can I ask, ask you to repeat your name, please? Sure, Pamela Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mark Erba. Yes, hello, thank you. Uh, yeah, Mark Erba, and I'm actually at 40 Berkshire Terrace. And, um, you know, my, my observations are specific to the traffic from uh, the, the Northwest traffic, traffic traveling Northwest on um, South Main uh, towards um, uh, towards Locust and the intersection of Berkshire Terrace and South Main. Coming from that direction, it's a soft right turn. Um, and this is relative to other, uh, I think a bigger discussion around cut through traffic uh, from Berkshire Terrace, but uh, similarly, Cars come flying off of South Main, taking that soft right-hand turn onto Berkshire Terrace, where there's no speed limit posted. Um, and, uh, there's been some near misses that I've observed of pedestrians and, and uh, cyclists. So um, I think that might be a, a, a you know, part of the bigger picture to, uh, uh, to observe. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comment. Councillor Jarrett? Thank you. Uh, Alex Jarrett, at 8 High Street, Florence. Um, so I appreciate the 85th percentile speed is 32.2 miles per hour. Thank you for that data. What that means is that 15% of vehicles are traveling faster than that speed. Uh, so in other words, about one in seven vehicles are traveling at an unsafe rate of speed. And this makes me wonder if our decision-making about <clears throat> what constitutes a speeding problem should be revisited. Um, and I have a question. I don't know if you can break out that, that data, Chief, a little more. Do, do you have data about the range of speeds that we are seeing in those one in seven speeders? Uh, for example, like what percentage are traveling faster than 40 miles an hour? Yep, we would have that data in the breakout. I don't have it in front of me now, but we do receive that data when we collect it from the devices that we place out and out on the streets. And I think that would be valuable um, to, to have uh, in terms of making a decision about whether um, traffic calming was warranted here. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any other comments that I may not be able to see? David Drake? Yes, yes. Thank, thank you. I support any effort by the committee to, um, to encourage traffic calming on um, um, the South Main Street. It is, uh, at times of the day, it's, it's very, very fast. I sit, my, my, I live at 321 Locust Street, which is immediately opposite the end of South Main Street. Um, uh, on, I live on the corner of Plymouth and, um, and Locust Street. So I see the traffic that, that has, is zooming up the road uh, from down below, uh, from, from Nantuck, and also the traffic that makes this tight turn and then zoom down uh, South Maple, um, excuse me, South Main. Uh, and um, uh, so if there's any traffic calming that uh, you all can, can uh, uh, figure out, I think that's a great idea and I'm glad to see you're ta tackling it. Um, I think there's a larger issue of, of the amount of traffic that is meant to go through the Z of Locust Street, uh, South Maple, excuse me, South Main, and then on to Pine Street, um, because that's a highly used Z pattern of traffic. And um, uh, Pine Street is only one and a half lanes wide, even after current uh, rebuilding. Um, it is not wide enough to hold two lanes of, uh, of opposing traffic. Um, uh, if any residents are parked on the street, which they are allowed to do. So it's a, it, it is already a very precarious situation. And that tees right into um, South Main right there as a choke point, uh, not just for local uh, neighborhood traffic, but for traffic coming from all of the other Hamptons uh, and the Ryan Road area and, um, and, and so forth of, of Northampton. So I, I would strongly favor any traffic calming on, um, on South Main. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, I don't see any other hands except for Olivia slash Pam. Dale Ventura. Okay. Yeah, yeah hey. Daryl Ventura, 58 South Main Street. Um, I, I agree with most of the people here. Um, it's episodal. I've, I've been here 25 years and the speeding happens like any other neighborhood here and there, but we have a peculiar specific episodal speeding. Um, I got a dog about a year ago. Um, and I did a lot of walking in the middle of the day around lunchtime. And I think a lot of the high school um, kids that are leaving for lunch, I've seen them just fly up the street, fly back to the high school as I'm walking my dog on South Main, Pine, and uh, parts of Nonatuck. And then the same when school gets out, um, yeah. there's a huge amount of speeding. Um, it's shocking. And I think if we maybe even instead of all just looking at a study, we actually had a, a cruiser maybe sit for the half hour of lunch and a half hour after school gets out. And I think that would show way more than a study. Um, and I agree with Councilor Jarrett that studies say, yeah, 85% um, are sticking to the speed limit, but that's 15% that aren't. So if you're, if you're walking down the street, one in seven cars might be flying by. Um, which is a little shocking as well. Plus, we're a very, um, very big area for dog walkers, people walking to the high school, tons of students walk to and from. So I think we deserve a little special consideration um, as far as being um, a street where teenagers walk to and from school. Um, uh, thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Is there anyone else other than Olivia Pam and Olivia Pam? I'll call right back on you in a minute if there's no one else. Cindy, is there anyone else? There is. There's a hand up from. Go ahead now. Hi. Ready. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Ah, oh, just yes. Gi just give us your name and address, please. Yes, Elaine Kirsten, and Thank I'm you. actually uh, I'm actually from Warner Street, but I am a regular dog walker throughout South Main Street area. I'm very familiar with it on a daily basis, and fully agree that that sort of section that goes swoops down after a curve, by the way, and then swoops down is is you know very highly. Um, I, I see high speeds, but I think one of the issues is that the speed limit is too high. Because frankly, when I'm driving through that narrow area and I'm going 30, I feel like I'm going too fast because I got to maneuver so much. And I think one of the issues is we've got to drop the speed limit to 25 in these highly 
thickly residential areas that people are zooming through or even not just even 33 miles per hour that's way too fast for that area and you said that was the average i'm i'm appalled at that but at any rate I'm, i'd like to suggest that we consider dropping the speed limit in these thickly settled areas now that we can because the state said it's all right to 25 thank you very much all right thank you for your comments Not seeing any other hands. So I'm gonna call on you, Pam, go ahead for your second comment. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I did not um, add to this earlier. I'm kind of talking about um, Pine Street as well as South, South Main. They took away the capacity to park on both sides of the road on uh, Pine Street. And so now I feel like with the wider road, um, with the inability to park on one side of the road, cars can go even faster. Um, so I bet if we did a new study, well, actually there hasn't been a study on Pine Street that I'm aware of, but if we were to do a new one, I, I think we would see that the, um, that the um, velocity has in fact gotten even worse. I agree with the woman who just spoke that 30 miles an hour in a highly residential area, um, just not just Pine Street, but South Main. I think we need to really look at um, how quickly, what 30 miles an hour is. You know, um, because we can no longer park, and I know I'm just talking about my particular situation, that's because we can no longer park on the side of our house on Pine Street, even when we're getting in and out of the car on the other side of the road, there are cars flying by, you know, you're carrying hockey bags and things like this, and it feels like you can't even cross your street. Um, we don't have a, a walkway there, so it, it's just way too fast. People take the curve onto South Main very quickly. Um, it's been like this for 10 years since we've lived here. It's gotten worse because of the amount of traffic and how fast it's going. So thank you. That was my last two cents. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna just look through one last time for any members of the public who would like to comment yeah. on this. Okay, I'm not seeing any more. Then again, I keep not seeing them and they're there. Cindy, do you see any that I don't I do see? not see anybody else. All right, sounds good. Okay, any members of the commission who would like to speak on this? Councilor Foster, go ahead. Oh, um, Director Mish, did you have a question or you started, so? Uh, no, go, go for it, I'll go after you. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I appreciate the residents bringing this um, forward and the commission studying it and, and um, Chief for the speed data. Um, I know this road well and it seems like it's got a couple of the, the common concerns that, that we hear of being a cut through straight street, and then also it's relatively straight with good sight lines. And so, um, you know, speed limit being what it is, people are going to drive the speed that they feel safe driving. Um, you know, the speed limit signs, I, I personally live on a cut through street and see it as well. You know, I, I live on a speed hump, so there's a big 20 mile an hour sign but it, it's a wide straight street and people, most people slow down, but there is that, that upper percentile that don't, that are gonna fly through because they feel safe doing it. Um, so that's just something for us to think about as we're looking at that, at that road is um, being a straight street with decent sight lines and a cut through is that people are going to both feel safer driving faster. And then also um, if it's, if they're trying to get somewhere else, they're more likely to be in a hurry and especially hearing that it's more likely to happen at lunchtime or after school dismissal when you're when you're on your way somewhere not necessarily going home um so i don't necessarily have a grand suggestion about it i just wanted to to add that in as we're considering driving driver behavior as well as the the requests around speed limits um i don't know that that's necessarily the answer if people still behavior is going to be um you know leading people to drive faster okay thank you Carolyn Mish, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I just um, observations of um, this stretch of street uh, where there are multiple, or I guess there used to be three sort of Y intersections um, that came in that make it, I think, easier for people to slip through um, turns and, and go quickly as opposed to fully slowing down to make um, more, um, 90 degree angle turns. And I know this was addressed by DPW was sort of a lighter touch down at the intersection of Donatuck and um, South Main Street where 
um, that geometry was adjusted to make it more of a right um, angle intersection. And I wonder if a similar approach um, could be implemented at the intersection of Berkshire Terrace and Trinity Row, um, because those are the two streets that also come in at that angle and, it, and facilitate um, people making those turns very quickly as opposed to slowing down to make a, a, a direct turn. Um, that doesn't, that won't necessarily address the speed along the length of South Main Street, um, but it, I think, it adds a visual cue that maybe something we could look at um, as a potential option. Thank you for your comments. Any other members of the commission? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else. I don't see anyone. Okay. All right, well, thank you everyone, members of the public and the commission for comments on that. So we will um, continue looking at this issue and seeing, you know, looking at our data, um, looking, we can look a little higher on the data as Councillor Jarrett suggested in the 90th percentiles, you know, see what we're looking at um, some of those. The 85th percentile is, is the standard that's commonly used as a way to measure average speeds and speeds of most of the traffic, but we're, we can certainly look at some of the higher percentiles as well. Um, so that being said, let's move on to the next agenda item which is this, uh, item number 5C, that is the discussion of traffic calming requests for Warner Street. Let me just bring that up. Okay, so from the police department perspective, we did a five-year collision analysis for Warner Street and found that there had been a zero collisions on Warner Street in the last five years. Looked at the speed data. So we collected covert speed data in front of 56 Warner Street from June 19th to the 27th of this year, during which time the speeds of 1,247 vehicles were analyzed. The average speed was 15, the 85th percentile speed was 19.8. So based on that data, it didn't appear that there was a significant speeding problem uh, on Warner Street. Then from the DPW, uh, it provides one lane of travel in the east and west directions between Federal Street and Liberty Street. Warner Street is about 2,330 feet long and has a width of 20 feet. There's a short segment of sidewalk on the north side from 47 to Hinkley Street. Parking is allowed on both sides for the entire length. There's no existing speed regulations for Warner Street. The pavement is in good condition. So that's what the DPW and the police department found. And then I will just open this discussion up to members of the public that may wanna comment on Warner Street. So if there's anyone who wants to comment on Warner, just raise your hand, I'll call on you and just uh, your name and address. Jackie Balance, I see your, your hand is up. Yeah, I'm back again. I, I'm Jackie Balance. I live at 35 Warner Street near the bottom of the hill. It's a uh, like South Main Street, it's a hill, but Mortar Street is even steeper. And when I go visit friends at the top of the hill and come home, I have to ride my brake. I have been walking the dog at going downhill, and there were and there are no sidewalks. That that little tiny little bit is an, an anomaly. An anomaly. Um, so walking down the hill with my dog. And my dog has a long leash. I let him. I let him out. I let him have his nose. And there's people have electric cars, and they come down the street, and you can't hear them. So I don't know to rein in my dog, which I usually do when there's a car coming by. And we have more children. You did that study over the last five years. Just in the last two years, we've got six new houses on this block, um, thirteen new cars, uh, traffic. And no, not to mention the delivery trucks, FedEx, uh, well, UPS, all of them make multiple deliveries on my block all day long. And the, the delivery drivers are the only ones that uh, watch their speed. I looked out my front window this morning and I saw a little gray car going by and I, I couldn't believe how fast it went. I don't know what your studies are, but my direct experience says that there's speeding going on. So neighbors on the next block up have taken to park parking their cars alternately 
just to make people coming downhill slow up a little bit. I think a four-way stop at Hinkley would be really cool. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comment. Any other members of the public who want to comment on Warner Street? Looks like David Drake, you have your hand up. You need to do something on your computer because I'm asking you to unmute. I've unmuted if it's me. Who who is who are we talking to? David Drake. Oh no. David, we can't hear you. If you can try to unmute, is there a button that says unmute? He's talking. He doesn't know. And Cindy, there's nothing we can do to unmute him. We're trying and- I'm, I'm clicking the ask to unmute. Yep. And he needs to accept it. He's just talking. I didn't even see him. Oh, is that you, David, or oh, is that oh, someone else? Okay. There and, we go. And, All right, we can, can hear you, hear you David. Go ahead. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, again, 321 Locust Street. Uh, my comment is is actually sort of about a bunch of these traffic calming um, uh, proposals. The city has enacted a program of, of allowing and encouraging a greater density of development throughout the Florence and, and, and uh, downtown Northampton area, um, which is a whole separate issue. But with the greater density of the city, I think we need to really ask ourselves whether the, the concept of traffic speed being designed or based uh, upon the safety uh, at which a driver feels going down a road uh, is, a, is antiquated because drivers may easily in a dense area feel safe and yet be unaware of the hazards that, they, that their speed is, is uh, presenting to passersby who are entering or, or exiting uh, or turning um, in the in the roadway, and it's not enough to say that people feel safe on a road that has clear sight lines, um, because that certainly doesn't work on on the Mass Pike, um, uh, and and the Mass State Police enforce um, a much lower speed limit than what people feel safe uh, driving on the Mass Pike, and and it that if we shouldn't have a standard in, in Northampton either. There should be regulations that set a reasonable and appropriate uh, uh, speed rather than just what, what people feel safe driving. So I, I would, I mean, I'm in favor of, of, of physical uh, changes in the roadway when budget allows to help encourage traffic calming um, at both ends of Florence, um, because a lot of the issues that we're talking about today are not going to be uh, solved until we can get uh, people proceeding through through Florence as a as a small community center and not as just a um, uh, uh, something they pass through between the hill towns and I ninety one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any other members of the public? There is one more. I can't remember the name. Elaine Kirsten. Okay, Elaine, go ahead. Uh -huh, yes, yeah. so just quickly again, having to do with when you collected the data, um, the the time was the what time June nineteenth or whatever to uh, what were, what were the dates? It seemed um, I, I I wonder if those were after school was out, June nineteenth um, to the twenty seventh, twenty twenty two. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm time of day. I, I'm just also wondering if it was all day or what time of day, if there were, you know, it collects data 24 hours a day when once it's out there, it collects the whole time. So it was collecting through that whole period. It's electronic. So, yeah. So I, I, I'm curious about it because I live on Warner Street. Uh, we do put our car in the road specifically uh, to calm the traffic because <laughs> before we did it was um, a, like a free for all down there. And yes, maybe it was 30 miles per hour, but in my opinion, that's way too fast for a very densely um, populated area. But I'm just wondering if, if we should really be talking about reducing the speed limit here um, in general to these densely area uh, places where, um, where, where we're complaining of, of speeds going too fast for the life that is occurring in these areas. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comment. One more. 
Uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, same address, 73 Warner Street. Um, and what's your name? Uh, Larry Cataret. Thank you. I just want to, uh, to emphasize uh, the particular nature of Warner Street uh, from the hill at the top uh, uh, going down to where it crosses Hinkley, where there's a stop sign that is sometimes observed by uh, drivers cutting through from uh, uh, Riverside. From Riverside. Uh, I'm sitting where I usually sit in my nice lazy chair, looking out the window at that stop sign that is there. And what I see most of the daytime uh, and a lot of times uh, during five o'clock or going to work times are tremendous numbers of people walking their dogs, children coming down that steep hill uh, to catch the bus at that intersection oh, of, God. right? Uh, and 30 miles an hour, I will tell you, is much, much too fast for this road. Um, I see at least, uh, and I would swear by this, at least two to three, sometimes more cars can just ignore the stop sign and go flying through, especially around lunchtime and especially around three to five o'clock. Uh, it's a dangerous intersection and sure, there hasn't been any major accidents in five years, but it's going to come sooner or later and a child on a skateboard coming down that hill or somebody walking their dog uh, is going to be killed. Uh, it's an accident and a death waiting to happen. You need to get out here with observable eyes, walk the road during those times and observe what's going on just like what we're observing, not to use just speed counters that say the speed limit is this and this, 30, 30 miles an hour. Um, gee, well, they said 19. When I go over to Child's Park, the speed limit's 25 miles an hour in a park area. Uh, I don't see any reason why the speed limit can't be reduced to at least 25, if not 20 miles an hour on this road. Uh, Thank you very much, yes. Okay, thank you for your comments. Just gonna look if there's any other members of the public. Okay, I'm not seeing any. If there's no other members of the public, are there members of the commission that would like to speak on Warner Street? Councillor Foster. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to clarify before what I meant, because I, I must not have, I don't think I spoke very clearly. Um, so lowering the speed limit is an option, but also the roadway, what I'll talk about that in a second, but the roadway needs to be constructed or we need to make the infrastructure changes so that people don't feel safe going faster. That's what I, that's what I meant. I didn't mean that um, the speed limit shouldn't be looked at as well. Um, and I know the director is not here and she could say this far more eloquently than I can about um, setting regulatory speed limits, but when there is a speed limit sign that was set by a traffic study um, and it can't be changed by the city, um, you know, even if we all look at the street and say you shouldn't drive more than 20 miles an hour um, under state statute, we don't have the authority to change the speed limit without another traffic study, which um, I, I don't want to fully quote this, um, Director Mish, you may be able to say, but I believe it's in the tens of thousands of dollars, and that would be per street that we're looking at that. Um, so where we have authority with TPC and within the city is around looking at the roadway design and making the changes we can so that, I, and I, I agree with this, and, and I wish that we had a way to look at near misses and in incidents because when we are looking at collision data, it is too late. I, I get this, um, and I and I think I share the frustration. Um, if we could catalog the moments where cyclists or pedestrians or dog walkers or skateboarders didn't feel safe, we'd have a treasure trove of data to collect um, and, and direct the decision making. As it stands right now, we don't have data, a system to collect that. We don't have that right now. So what we have 
is the speed studies and the collision data, as well as the engineering look at the roadway. So I just wanted to make sure that my comments before were clear and, and um, you know, similarly, um, is there is there street parking in Warner Street? I'm sorry if I missed that detail. I believe there is. Because the, the resident, you were talking about residents up the hill parking on opposite sides of the street. And, and that is a well-known way to slow traffic. Um, but perhaps looking at where the parking zones are, maybe one thing, one direction um, we can look at as well as, as, as other considerations. Councillor Foster, with the data that um, the director gave me from the DPW, she writes that parking is allowed on both sides for the entire length. That's what she put in her notes on the on this. Thank study. you. I, I missed that. Right. Okay. Yep. I see your your hand, Linda. I'll, I'll call on you after the commission finishes, just because we just finished the public comment part. So let me just check on the rest of the commission. Are there any other commissioners who who want to chat on Warner Street? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else. So Linda Langlois, if you can just state your name and address. Hi, my name is Linda Langlois, 268 Locust Street in Florence, right across from the Silk Mill. And I've essentially lived in, in this house for more than 35 years on the corner. And then next door to that previously for a good 20 years, I'm gonna get a little bit old. And uh, I have kind of beat the horse about the traffic speed on Locust Street over the years um, to no avail. I have been able to uh, see some uh, signs I'll put out there for pedestrian crossings, but I, I've seen lots of near misses. I myself almost got hit by a car while I was in the crosswalk of a car coming out of Straw Avenue just a few weeks ago. I had to jump out of the way to avoid being hit. Um, the traffic speed on Locust Street is and has been excessive for this congested neighborhood for a long time. The traffic trying to turn from the west coming down toward the east going into the Silk Mill, even into Straw Avenue, but definitely into the Silk Mill, is it's crazy. I mean, I've had people up on my yard. I've had my, my fence ripped out. I've had a tree hit. Uh, people swerving to avoid a car that's slowing down or stopping. The, the speed is 40 miles an hour. And the, the congestion that has increased in this neighborhood, and I grew up in this neighborhood, and I know it has increased significantly the speed limit has not adjusted accordingly. And it's a dangerous, dangerous intersection here. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I've contacted the state over the years because I was told at one point many years ago by the city that it was required of a state approval. I contacted the state and they said, no, it's the city's approval. And really have got nowhere except to get a couple of signs out that say to be, be cautious of pedestrians. And that is sporadic whether or not people are, are good enough to stop for a pedestrian in the crosswalk or the bicyclist. But I, I just can't emphasize enough the, the number, of, so many people in town are taking heed to not using their cars. They're out on their bikes, they're out on their skateboards, they're out walking, but we are not adjusting the, the dangerous cars that just take total freedom of the road and have seemed to have quite an entitlement. And I'm a driver. So, I mean, I, I, I understand all of this, but you know, it's just, it's just mind boggling that we can't get numbers to justify slowing this speed down. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you for your comments. Okay. I don't see anyone else uh, who wants to chime in. David Drake, David Drake. Okay, go ahead, David. You'll just have to unmute David. I'm, I'm trying, he needs to yep. respond. David, whatever David. you clicked last time. There you go, okay, sorry, I'm doing on, a, I'm doing on an iPhone, sorry. Um, uh, I, I support what we just said, um, and uh, I, I uh, there's a straw. I mean, it looks like a, a sleepy little side street, but it actually is 
um, the entryway for a, an area, obviously a very uh, dense development in the city and it gets a lot of traffic. Uh, and there's a lot of turning going in and out of, of the uh, uh, people going about their lives and going turning in and out of Tri Avenue. So it's a, it's a much higher use uh, street than average. So I, I fully support the notion of uh, any traffic calming down there. 40 is very high. I understand the point about the commission not being able to set the the um, the um, uh, speed limit, and that's that's puzzling. But I I'll accept that. But if there's an issue of the state passing this back and forth, um, as has been reported, then then I would respectfully ask that uh, Councilor Jarrett and and Chief Casper join meet with the state DOT and find out exactly who is responsible so that citizens in Northampton are not faced with uh, calling all the all the seemingly relevant parties and being passed around like ping pong. We need to we need to know exactly who should be responsible and who we can talk to. I have a I have a strong concern about about 40 mile an hour stuff because people are going 40 mile an hour right in front of my house um, and I'm and I'm feet away from downtown Florence. Um, it's just way too fast. And it, it says 25, but it's unobserved. Um, so um, yeah, I, I strongly support the last caller. And by the way, ma'am, I, I, I'm the one who snow blows your, um, your front walk on Locust Street uh, down, down every winter when there's heavy snows. <laughs> DPW is hiring. <laughs> All right. Thank I you do for your it, comments. I do it for... <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your comments. I see Mark, feel free to uh, chime in. Yeah, um, so I know this is, I think we might be off track on the Warner Street discussion, but it, it is a, it is a, you know, a, a larger discussion. The, the baffling, the baffling uh, thing that I, I, that's, you know, to recognize is that on Locust Street going westbound, there's a 25 mile an hour sign. Once you go past the heading west, in westbound direction, once you go past the Berkshire Straw Avenue intersection, there's a 25 mile an hour uh, speed limit sign as you're going further into town. Almost directly across the street coming out of town, there's a 40 mile an hour speed limit going eastbound, um, which, you know, which again is, is, is baffling in and of itself. Um, but the, only, the, uh, if you, the, on the east side of the intersection, it's another half mile uh, before uh, heading westbound, there's a 40 mile an hour sign and heading eastbound, there's a 35 mile an hour sign right around the DPW. Um, so that whole stretch coming, going down that hill after the intersection of Berkshire Terrace and Straw, uh, to the point of several folks who have spoken on this on this call, cars are flying. And one when while there's a 40 mile an hour limit, that's likely going to be the minimum for most drivers because it, it seems that human uh, behavior is to try is to go in excess of it and feel justified doing so. Similarly, two weeks ago, I was almost hit in that intersection because cars coming out of Straw and cars coming out of Berkshire are intent on the traffic that they have to navigate to get onto Locust Street and often disregard the pedestrians waiting to cross. Um, so uh, twice I've almost almost been hit, once on my bike and once as a pedestrian. My partner was also almost hit three weeks ago with our dog. So it's not, and we live on Berkshire Street, that same end right across from uh, Linda. Um, and, you know, we, we hear the horns on the near misses and we hear the metal crunching uh, on the, on the, uh, on, on the uh, collisions. Um, so anyhow, just to add to that uh, discussion. Thank you, Mark. I will just remind everyone that this is a discussion of Warner Street. I know we've gotten a little off track and we actually do have Locust Street as a traffic calming uh, request and it'll be on future agendas. So to talk about that intersection particularly, which I know has certainly had collisions at Straw and Locust and, and the speed there um, will be an issue at a, at a future meeting. So if we can keep it to Warner Street, I would appreciate it. Brett, I see your hand is up and I hope you wanna talk about Warner Street. Happy to talk about Warner Street. This is Brett Constantine, 52 Willow Street, Florence, member of the Pedestrian Bicycle Subcommittee. I, uh, my brother lives on Warner Street, so I'm there somewhat frequently. And um, since there are no sidewalks, I think it's very interesting, you know, important to note that there, the, the 
pedestrian traffic will be in the street. Um, and I do see a lot of pedestrian traffic on that street in that area. Um, so, it, you know, some places I can say, oh, 30 miles an hour, that's not so bad. There's sidewalks. But in this case, there are not sidewalks. And so 30 miles an hour does feel faster because when you're talking about speeds, you're talking about relative speeds between the pedestrian or the bicyclist and the you know, other traffic. So I would support a lowering of the speed limit or finding some way to traffic calm Warner Street for that reason. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Brett. Okay, I see no other hands raised. Oh, okay. Cindy, did you wanna say something? Pat Schumann just raised her hand. Okay. Pat, do you wanna speak on Warner Street? I just want, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I, uh, quickly, I, I'm on very picturesque Hinkley Street. <laughs> Um, are you going to be talking about Hinkley today? I don't believe we have Hinkley. Is that a combination of Warner and Hinkley? I mean, that I, I kind of got the impression that there was that. That's a combination. I mean, I live two or three houses up from Warner, so I'm basically, you know, I'm a resident of all that area, and um, I don't know if I can make a comment on on Hinkley Street, but. Both Hinkley and Warner are are kind of the same in their traffic, except I think Hinkley gets more um, run, you know, pass through traffic. It's more along the lines of Federal and Locust and all that. I mean, we're getting more trucks coming through, pickup trucks, you know, big sand trucks, you know, from the construction that goes on around here. And just like all my other neighbors were saying that, you know, we do have a lot of pedestrians in the area. Thank God, you know, that we have sidewalks now. And it's very nice, even though we have to shovel them, that's okay, but it's a lot safer. And yes, I have parked my car outside on the sidewalk to calm it down. And I haven't been doing that lately and I should be because I was walking up Hinkley today and this car, this SUV was driving down Hinkley Street as though it were heading to a fire, all right? You know, it was just really coming down really fast. And I just kind of waved my arms and just trying to help him slow down or her. And, um, but anyway, I don't know what other else, you know, you can do, but um, I, would, I would vote for a, a lowering of the speed on Hinkley Street as well. Thank you, Pat. To live in, and I'd hate to see an accident or a life taken before anything is done. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Appreciate those comments. Okay. If not, we're going to move on to the next agenda item, which is a discussion of traffic calming on Florence Street. Let me just bring up what I have. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, Florence Street. So the police department reviewed collision data. I did that review on June 27th of this year and it's a five year look back. And there were zero collisions on Florence Street during the past five years from June 27th back five years. Speed data was reviewed, it was collected in front of 114 Florence Street from June 28th to July 7th of 2022. Throughout that time, the speeds of 23,807 vehicles were analyzed. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour. The average speed was 34 and the 85th percentile speed was 38.4. So this is an area where speeding is definitely an issue when that was confirmed by the, the data. The DPW information, Florence Street provides one lane of travel in the east and west directions between Haydenville Road, which is Route 9, and Mulberry Street. Florence Street is approximately 3,590 feet long with a width of 30 feet. There are sidewalks on the north side from approximately 200 feet west of Route 9 to 50 feet west of Arch Street. 
The sidewalk then switches to the south side of the street and continues to Mulberry Street. There are double yellow center lines for the entire length and crosswalks at various locations. There are several parking restrictions on this street. There's an existing speed regulation for Florence Street. The speed starting at Haydenville Road, heading westerly for 0.63 miles towards Front Street is 30 miles per, per hour. The pavement is in poor condition. So that's an overview of the police departments and DPW's findings. Uh, and now, are there any members of the public who would like to speak on Florence Street? Liz, your hand shot up. <laughs> Please say your name and your address. Hi, I'm Liz Burmworth. I use, live at 122 Florence Street in Leeds. Um, so I am about two houses down from the intersection of Florence Street and Arch Street. Um, the thing that led me to make a request for the traffic calming is that when you come down the hill from Leeds School headed towards Route 9, there's no sign indicating that there's a crosswalk. Um, there's no sign indicating that there's a crosswalk um, at Florence Street and Arch Street. Um, and because that's also where the sidewalk changes because the, the sidewalk going towards Leeds School um, is on uh, the side where Heffernan Street is. Um, and then at Arch Street, it changes to the other side of the road um, going up the hill. Um, so there's no sign coming down the hill that there is a crosswalk there. Um, this is a street that gets a lot of traffic from semi trucks from Chart Pack, um, traffic in the summer from the river. It's an ambulance route, so there's lots of ambulances. Um, as Chief Casper noted, um, there is speeding on this road. Um, in the winter months, as kids are going to school at Leeds School, car, uh, cars coming down the hill are headed right into the sun because they're headed east. Um, so there's glare from the sun at that crosswalk. And at, in the winter months, um, it, right, like, it's dark um, when you're coming up and down that hill. Um, and there's no indication that there's a crosswalk there. Um, and in terms of the accident data, I'm, I'm a little confused because I've only lived at this house for two years and I know that there was an accident at Heffernan Street and Florence Street. Um, within the past two years, it was an Amazon truck and a car collided directly in front of my house. Um, so I'm not sure why that doesn't come up in the data, um, but there absolutely was an accident um, directly in front of my house within the past two years. Um, also noting the buses um, up and down that street, the school district took away the crossing guard that was at uh, Florence Street and Arch Street uh, last year. Um, so there's no crossing guard there for students that choose to walk to school. Um, so for all these reasons, I, you know, I stood at that intersection and had as many as seven cars pass me before someone stopped. Um, the day that I, I wrote my request for calming, I was actually stopped at the intersection going up the hill and two cars uh, passed going down the hill when there was a student trying to cross the street. Um, so, you know, I, I just am really worried that someone's going to get hit at that intersection. So thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for those comments. Okay, are there any other comments on Florence Street? I don't see any. I don't see any either. And do any members of the commission wanna speak on Florence Street? Councillor Foster, I see your hand, go ahead. I guess I have a lot to say today. Um, I, I know the section of street well, um, mostly from biking, so not as fast as I would like to be going, but um, um, you know, I, I, I can see, especially with needing to cross there with the, the sidewalk crossing. And if you were driving, I don't think you would expect to see a crosswalk there. The way Arch Street is kind of tucked back, um, you know, I could really see why a driver 
would be kind of in their own world, probably going too fast and not notice that there is a, a crosswalk there. Uh, that seems like one. Um, we may want to consider, and I know this is far more complex than, than I fully understand, but um, you know, a, a push button light system there um, and or down the road, um, considering with traffic study, potentially a raised crosswalk there. Um, or you know, with the sidewalks going from one side to the other, people have no choice but to cross there. And I see the bus stops there. Um, so you know, clearly that's that's a crosswalk that that um, we're going to want to really consider drawing as much attention to as we possibly can. Thank you, Councillor. Any other members of the commission who'd like to speak on this? Uh, hey, oh. it's Jamie. I, yep, I, go I, ahead, Jamie. Yeah, I was just going to add that I, I don't know if there's a crosswalk candle there, but that's one of the inexpensive ways we can get something out there um, quickly. I know they get beat up when there's a lot of high speed traffic, but you know, they're better than uh, than a kid getting hit. Yeah, thank you. I agree. I think that's a great spot for one. It would draw attention to the crosswalk there. We always run into the issue of as we move into uh, winter time. You know, normally we put them out when when it's not winter because the plows have to have to navigate the streets. Um, but that's an interesting short term solution to get something there. Um, we can certainly look into that as a short term solution would make sense. And I, it, it is puzzling as as much as you may not know the crosswalk is there. Most people who drive over it probably drive over it all the time because it's a their route to wherever they're going. So I would hope that they would know it was there, but apparently not if they're driving around folks. So, and it, it that's an a uh, substantial speed problem there. I think, you know, 38 for the 85th percentile is pretty substantial in a 30. We have added this street to our directed patrols. Um, so we have officers, you know, who are on a, a rotating basis of different streets where we have these more severe um, problems that we identify and Florence Street is on our list. You know, we only, when they have so many resources to be out there, but when we have time, we certainly make the effort to be on these types of streets particularly. Anyone else from the commission who would like to make any comment on this? Okay, seeing no other comments, uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item. And look at that, it's Locust Street. It was waiting there the whole time for us. Uh, the next agenda item, 5E, is a discussion of parking requests for Locust Street. And I am looking for the item. I actually don't really have any information on this one. I don't normally process any data for parking requests. Um, is there anyone on the commission? Nancy, would you have anything to add on this? No, I'm Maybe. sorry, I don't have anything right now. Okay. Okay, well, looking at the request on here, essentially we're seeing that it's it, the person has written, the resident has written that it's near impossible to see oncoming traffic from Florence Center when cars are parked uh, in from the two houses near the corner of Straw and Locust when multiple car, cars are parked. I will add in before I open this up to comment that um, this section of street is on our list, looking at speed and collisions, not just parking that will be coming up. And I'm sure that this will kind of wrap into that. Uh, but that being said, let's open it up for public comment. Uh, Councillor Jarrett, I see your hand. Thank you. Um, now, a few months ago, there was a very serious parking request. Was this, is, for this exact spot, is, is this a, a duplicate of that or a slightly different location? You broke up a little bit, Councillor, at the beginning, but you're asking if this is a duplicate request? Yeah. Essentially. Anyone else on the commission remember when the, there was a very similar request that came before us? Um, I could probably find it, but if I looked back a couple months ago in the minutes, but um, just to speak to this request, I think it's, you know, this is a very difficult intersection to cross. Uh, if you're both in a motor vehicle when because of the high volume of traffic on Locust Street and then also um, 
if you're a pedestrian at the crosswalk <clears throat> and uh, anything that can increase the sight lines for people pulling out because they're having to take in so much information. You know, is there someone crossing in the crosswalk? Oh, there are cars coming at 40 miles an hour in either directions. So anything that, that will in, increase that sight ability for the person who's pulling out a straw out to, to look right and to see that there isn't someone coming um, should increase safety. But I, I, I am very glad that there, this, there will be a bigger discussion on this because I think it's very much warranted. Thanks. Absolutely. Other, Mark, I see your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, just real quickly, as as Alex mentioned, that uh, you know that I, this does. I, I think I think many of us agree this. There's a bigger discussion around here with with various factors um, at that particular intersection. I would just add specific to the sight line uh, coming from what the westbound tra or eastbound traffic, I should say. Um, in addition to the parked cars, there's there, there's parking allowed uh, a little bit further up uh, uh, around the block of uh, Summer Street uh, as well, and that's a that's a difficult street. My nephews and and, and niece and their mom live there. Um, also, this the, the same issue, and what exacerbates it from the Straw Berkshire intersection is that uh, is basically a hill. So there's a hill coming. Uh, as you're looking at the eastbound traffic from that intersection that um, uh, lim that inhibits the sight line. And as well, of course, with uh, at, at in the afternoon, the solar glare uh, coming from that same direction uh, compounds it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other? Oh, I see David Drake's hand up. Go ahead, David. We're going to we're going to need you to unmute as soon as you see that on your screen. Okay, th thank you. I'm sorry to be so kludgy at this. Um, can can the um, committee um, uh, recommend that a that a, a traffic uh, sort of radar sign be installed on Route Nine uh, in that corridor? Uh, a sign like what we put on North Farms Road uh, that indicates the current, the, the traffic speed of, um, of traffic. So as, as a traffic calming uh, method, is that, is that within the purview of, of the commission? And thank you for the question. It, it is a recommendation that could be made. Usually that would be something that we would seek out to an organization like Fuss and O'Neill who would come out and do a study and make that kind of recommendation. And of course, then there is the cost for those sorts of items. Um, so they are handy, they do reduce speed. There, there's some good data that when you put up a speed display sign, um, people drive more slowly, about 10% more, more slower, and that lasts for about a mile. So there's actually some pretty good data on those signs, but they're pricey as well. But we'll keep that in mind. Any other comments from members of the public? Okay, I don't see any. Are there members of the commission who would like to say anything on this parking discussion? I see no one. I also see no one. Okay, well, thank you everyone for your input on that um, discussion item. And the next agenda item is 5F. This is a proposed ordinance relative to parking on Holly Street. So I'm gonna read the ordinance. City of Northampton, Massachusetts. In the year 2022, upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission 22.XXX, an ordinance relative to parking on Holly Street. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled, as follows, section one, that the section 312-102 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-102, schedule one, parking prohibited at all times. Location, Holly Street, side northeast from Butler Place to a point 50 feet southeast from Butler Place. 
May I have a motion for a positive recommendation on that? Move a motion for a positive recommendation. Thank you. May I have second. a second? Thank second. you, Councillor Councillor Foster. Seconded. Thank you. Donna did leave me with a couple of notes on this that I, I can bring up. Um, this ordinance proposes a 50 foot long no parking zone on the northeast side of Holly Street from Butler Place heading south. This is in response to a parking request from the Ward 3 Councillor. His concern is as follows. Well, I believe he's on this call, but I'll sum it up for him. <laughs> um, for drivers as Butler wanting to turn onto Holly Street, the view to their left or to the south is obstructed by both the street tree and the nearness of the parking zone. This was previously discussed at the March 30th Transportation and Parking Commission meeting. It's difficult to see cross traffic when on Butler at the intersection with Holly Street due to the sidewalk being higher than the roadway, the existing tree and parked vehicles. There is an existing no parking sign posted 20 feet from the intersection. This ordinance is expanding that no parking zone. So that is the info from the DPW. Are there members of the commission who would like to say anything on this? Can, uh, go ahead, Nancy. I very much support um, the ordinance as proposed. Um, this is definitely an improvement to the sight line, which was very problematic um, and did create a hazard for vehicles being pulling out of Butler onto Holly Street. Okay, thank you. Any other members of the commission? Okay, any members of the public? Councillor Nash. Councillor Nash, go ahead. How did I do quoting you, Councillor? <laughs> yeah, I sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should be me more often. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for taking this up. Um, and, and I just want to do a shout out to Susan Merritt. She's the constituent that brought this to my attention. She lives at 50 uh, uh, Holly Street, uh, but the driveway is off of uh, Butler. And so, yeah, it, it's I want it clear that it's just not the counselor was walking around thinking, oh, I think I can solve this, that there was a constituent that was concerned about this. And um, I'm I'm happy that uh, I, I think this is a really uh, good solution. You know, basically removing one of the parking spaces and just improving the sight lines. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Councillor. Is there anyone else? Okay. So I see no one else who wants to make comment. There's a motion for a positive recommendation. Hearing no further discussion. Beth, could you call the roll? Uh, Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Camilla? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam. Yes. Uh, seven yes is passes unanimously. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Is there any new business? <laughs> is there any new business that anyone wants to bring up? I'm not seeing any. Cindy, are you seeing anything? I'm not. Okay. Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, um, Olivia Evans has her hand up. Okay, before that motion then, Olivia, you have new business for us, go ahead. All right, Pamela actually here, yes. that's my daughter. Um, I just, I'm not really sure how this works, so I'm sorry if I'm overstepping here, but I, what I've been hearing is, and talking to my, my um, fellow uh, neighbors, I've been living here for 10 years, we're becoming a more populous, so I'm talking about South Main and Pine, and then what I'm hearing around some of the other small residencies is that we're becoming more populous. 
there, there are more people moving in, more housing, more cars. Um, I'm, I'm hearing of a lot of speeding. In some cases, our roads have been expanded with, with less parking availability for the people who live here. So it feels as if the drivers are favored over the residents in some regards. Um, I'm hearing a need for slower traffic for speed bumps. I'm just wondering what the next steps are. Um, I think I will probably try to fill something out. I don't know if it's an, an ordinance, do I have to fill out a paper? I would like something to be done on, um, between South Main and Pine for the speeding and for the traffic. And do I have to fill out a paper like, uh, like I've seen today um, online? Because I feel like often when we've, we're discussing things in this neighborhood and we brought things up, it kind of falls on deaf ears. And I just wanna make sure it's just not pushed aside. Um, I feel like the, the drivers have more to say than the residents who live here. I mean, that's kind of how it's feeling. It's a little frustrating. So could you um, recommend what I do next? Yeah. I see something in the chat, let's see. I just yeah, shared the DPW info um, email address. Chief, I'm not sure if that is what you'd wanna do. We can, I can, and then I can show, direct them to the, uh, TPC traffic calming request. Yep, that would be great. Uh, Pam, what does happen, generally speaking, as you've heard us bring some items up for discussion here, and then we invite members of the public to come in and, and speak because we like to have a better understanding of the issues, sometimes translating them from a written form to what's actually going on is, is a good way to evaluate as well as looking at the data and site visits and all those other ways. I can assure you that nothing falls on deaf ears, but I can also assure you that things take forever. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the way it is. It's sometimes very frustrating, uh, but we do get closure on our traffic calming requests. Um, and some of those result in, in changes where there's identified problem areas. Um, and some don't where we haven't identified uh, significant issues. So I would, recommend to just take that link, go to the link that was just put in the chat box and, and you'll see um, how to fill out a traffic calming form. <clears throat> okay. You, have, you wanna say something else? Go ahead, Olivia. Oh, that's good, you got it. Okay, great, excellent, thank you. And you're not Olivia, I know that. <laughs> I just, I can't separate you from the name. All right, is there any other new business that anybody wants to bring up? Okay, I'm not seeing any more. Cindy, are you seeing any more? I am not. All right, may I have a motion to adjourn? We move to adjourn. Okay, that was from Carolyn and a second. I second it. Okay, from Adam. Beth, can you call the roll? Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jamila? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. And Adam? Yes. Once again, seven yeses passes unanimously.